Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. I'm Susan Barantini Mo. Joining me today is Fatima Gluckman, Engineering Leader, Cloud Platform Business Unit for VMware. She's also the author of this book, Nevertheless, She Persisted, True Stories of Women Leaders in Tech. And I'm so excited about this book. Fatima, welcome to the show. Thank you, Susan. It's exciting to be here. I love the title. Yes. <laughs> it's a powerful title. Preach. <laughs> well, the stories in the book are so interesting and so much of what's in them really resonated with the work that I've done with women. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I found super intriguing is the dynamics among women and how women behave with one another in the workplace. Did you, in your re research, did you really get into that too much? Is it like women supporting women? Yeah, I mean, or... I, in, it, as I have talked with women and done a little, just a tiny, tiny amount of research in, ter in terms of, for example, I did a little, little bit of research earlier this year um, and just asked women to share their stories of disempowering things that have been said to them in the workplace. And I found that a lot of them were said by other women which really mm -hmm. surprised me because I want us to be empowering each other. <laughs> and so, right. you know, I want us to be supporting and empowering each other. And, and there were so many cases where that wasn't true. And I suppose it has to do with, you know, being indoctrinated into a certain work culture and other cultural phenomena. But, but I wonder, um, did you come across any, um, like, what was your experience? Was it women supporting women more or was it kind of mixed? What was your experience there? So my experience, my personal experience has been where I haven't had women supporting women a lot. Yes. And I have that question in the book. Mm -hmm. But what was surprising is, I mean, my, my sample size is small. There were 19 women. My and all of them felt <laughs> that women were supportive of women. They didn't have any stories where they felt differently. Mm -hmm. I know that Telly did talk at one point where she did say, you know, her organization were, you know, was full of women and that brings a set of challenges mm -hmm. and that's why you need diversity. Yeah. Right. Because you just can't have an organization run just by women or just by right. men. You need to have a diverse, uh, in terms of race, culture and everything else. Yeah. So that's kind of what I've noticed from the book, but my own experience, I found women not supporting women. And just yesterday I was, I had dinner with one of the women in the book. I don't want to name her, but I had a dinner with her and she actually brought up a story where she felt that women weren't supportive of her in her through her career. Mm -hmm. And I guess we didn't kind of, kind of get into the de you know, details of it during the interview process, but she kind of gave me a glimpse of that. And when I asked her why, why that is the case, and she basically said, you know, tech is male dominated. And over the years, when you go into a meeting room, you're, you're the only female in the room. Mm -hmm. And now when we're pushing for diversity and we get more women in the room, I think women just are very uncomfortable because they've been that person, that one person within a room of men. And now they're, mm -hmm. you know, there's this other woman there. And I think that causes some form of insecurity, mm -hmm. something that goes on there. And I don't want to generalize, but, you know, probably something happens which causes women to not really support women. Mm -hmm. But yes, you're right. There are I've seen it, at least in my experience, where I haven't had women support me. But over the past couple of years, it's been different. I've had a lot more women come out and really support me. The but, you know, there's some outliers yeah. here, here and there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and we need to support each other. Yeah. And also, and this is something I've thought about quite a bit, is I, and I keep saying this, is, you know, this world, I feel, has been designed by men. And <laughs> women just live in it. <laughs> We just live in it. I mean, everything's designed by men, the way yes. our offices are designed, the airports, you know, uh, even our bras have been designed by men. Yes. <laughs> and we just live in it. And I think when it, you know, when we have other women, it kind of gets crowded and we just don't know what to do and we can't really support other women because we're trying to get that spot. Yeah. Right? We're fighting against this gender bias and everything else. And now we have to like, you know, fight with women too, right? Like compete right. with women. And I think that's kind of where a lot of that happens. Well, and we um, have our own unconscious biases as well. So exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, it's, it's so interesting to me, you know, that we, we cannot, I, we can't really blame it all on men. 
mm -hmm. we're not supporting one another, if we're not sponsoring one another. And yes. um, it's, I, you know, as I read your book and a couple of others recently, and did, I've been doing a lot of thinking around a lot of these, you know, equanimity at the executive levels, I've been thinking about like, when in my career has a woman reached out a hand to help me? And then I went, wait, when in my career have I ever, has a man ever reached out a hand to help me? Mm -hmm. And then I realized there, there hasn't been any of that. <laughs> I went, hey. And then I, I thought about all the times that I have reached out a hand to help men and women. And I was like, mm -hmm. hmm, the math's not adding up here. <laughs> yeah. It's so strange, yeah. but in the book, I saw some of the recurring themes that I, I expected to see. Women not advocating for themselves, not speaking up, imposter syndrome, jagged career trajectories. What were, what were the biggest takeaways for you, like the big discoveries? What, was, what surprised you or what were things that you, you thought, wow, this is something that we should have known about? I think when I started off, I just had this very naive perspective. I went in thinking that there wasn't any glass ceiling. I really uh, did for these women. Yeah. I went in with that and I asked them that question and, and they all came back and said, yes. You know, even if, if I was talking to a woman who was a CEO and you felt like she broke this glass ceiling, I felt like, I mean, all these women were like, no, there's a glass ceiling. And mm -hmm. they believed it wasn't, you know, it's not there intentionally. It's just there because of unconscious bias and all, the, you know, and everything that goes on within the industry. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, that was something that was interesting to me because I felt like we were kind of breaking that glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. And there was one interesting point uh, this woman made. She's actually not in the book. Um, I interviewed 26 women. Not all of them made it in the book. Mm -hmm. But one of them, she talked about how, you know, you can break one glass ceiling and another one will emerge. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be a glass ceiling yeah. for women. And we can shadow one and we can get to a certain level, but then there'll be another one. And that's kind of what I've depicted in my book. If you look at the cover of my book, it's, you see like, the, the whole idea was to have these multiple glass ceilings. Yes, yes. Um, you know. <laughs> and I think that was my big takeaway is that this is going to be a constant struggle. Yeah. Um, I'm not being pessimistic, but it's going to be a constant struggle. And I'm hoping, you know, the, the future generation, they give me a lot of hope. And I'm hoping that mm -hmm. things will just get better with yeah. you know, the generation. I sort of feel like we're a couple of gen a few maybe generations away from where we need to be, but yeah. um, it sometimes seems like people, ex some women expect it to be happening right now, and I just don't think that's going to happen. And I hate saying that, and it's weird. I I I don't often think about the limitations in my life, and mm -hmm. sometimes something will happen, and I'll be like, oh oh, what is that? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's a surprise. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the same thing with me. I never had limitations. I never thought I had limitations and then something would happen and be like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, actually, I'm like one of the women that, you know, like I'm like one of the women who actually want to have it now. Mm. Like I want, I want everything to happen now. And the reason yeah. being is I just don't get it because I can't understand why your gender or your race or your skin color should matter. Shouldn't. There's no bearing, you know, there's not science, there's no science that says, you know, you're less intelligent or you're less capable. And so I just don't get it. Like, I, I just don't get why we have that. Like, why is there a word called minority in the first place? <laughs> I mean, think about that. Like, why? It doesn't make any sense. And we need men in this conversation. I mean, you know, men have sisters and, you know, daughters and mothers and, uh, you know, if they're not advocating for themselves and they're not progressing, it, it's, it's going to get tough for men too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think that's the danger is, you know, swinging the pendulum in the other mm -hmm. direction too far. I, I would like right. to just see it come down right in the middle and, mm -hmm. and I'm perfectly content there. And, and I'm not, I'm not saying that, that I don't want it right now. I'm saying if I think about how social change happens, um, I think probably we're three or four generations away from where, from, yes. being, you know, and, but, but maybe we're going to, maybe I'll be surprised. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> yeah. And I also talk about, I talk, I gloss over this in the book and I probably should have brought it up front and front and center. 
but it's been something that I've been talking about since the book's been released is, you know, if you just look at fortune 500 companies today and you look at the number of women running them, we're like around 24. I think with Indra Nui stepping down, we're like 23 now. And the rate of change we're seeing year to year is, uh, is terrible. We're not mm -hmm. seeing this change where women are actually running these fortune 500 companies. Yeah. And with this rate of change, what's, what they've predicted is we won't see quality at the top until 2085. So kind of, I'm right. <laughs> yes. And I think that was the research when I did. I, I think it literally broke my heart because my daughter is four and a half. And I just felt like she's not going to see this until the 70s. And I just didn't want that for her. I was just like, this is crazy. I want to see that happen for her in her 20s or 30s and not like in her 70s. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think um, if you're like me, you operate in general, mm -hmm. like those limitations are external. They're not internal. Yes. I don't, I don't really try to operate with any internal limitations. And most of the time I can ignore the external ones. For me, it's different because I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own business. And so mm -hmm. I don't really have, but my clients do. My clients have, the, oh, this man said this or this happened. And, and I think it's a little easier for me to ignore than it is, you know, and, and it's also easier for me, you know, coming from a place of privilege. And so I think that um, I try to be patient, but my spirit doesn't want to be. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, it's hard. And it's, it's hard not to be absolutely infuriated by it. And it's, right. I mean, how can you not be? And it doesn't make any sense. And there is no logic behind it. It's just a silly cultural thing though, that has gone on for a while. And you're absolutely right. I think, um, you know, when we talk about the world of work, it has been designed by men, exactly as you said. And mm -hmm. in, in so far as that is, that is true, where is the tipping point where women there's enough, we have enough saturation in the world of work where we can begin to change the patterns and we don't have to act like men and we don't have, like we can bring our strengths to the table and yes. have them represented as strengths. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a tipping point somewhere in there. I'm just not sure where. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it'll happen. I think someday it'll happen. Just yeah. may not be in our lifetime. Yeah. Well, I love the book and, and I love that it's out there because I think it's important for not just other women executives and other women in tech to know they're not alone. And these stories certainly make people, make women realize, I, I thought, you know, as you, you know, maybe as you did, right. you know, oh, they do, we do have imposter syndrome. We do have, you know, not advocating for us. We do these things. Okay. And um, I'm not alone in doing them. And I think that's right. super powerful. And the more that we know other women are doing those things, the more we can may maybe help each other mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. support yeah. each other through that. So, yeah, the whole point was, for me at least, to get, because there are a lot of women kicking ass, right? And you just want to yeah. get their stories. Just create more and more role models and yeah. make things possible. And that's what this book does. Well, and that's the other thing I liked about it is that the women in this book aren't like the, the women who would be in the public eye all the time, yes. but they yeah. are leaders in their field. And, and they're yeah. just not, they're like what I call the hidden leaders. And mm -hmm. so I think that's super valuable as well to know that there are women that we don't often hear about that are in these great positions and are rocking it. And, and so for that, well done, exceptional book. Thank you for Thank writing you. it. Thank for, you. On behalf of women. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> where can our viewers find you so you, you they can find me on my website it's www.pratimagluckman.com okay. and you know from there they can navigate to wherever they want in terms of you know where they want to buy the book uh, you know I'm going to start doing some blogging and working on podcasts so it's a lot of fun stuff but I also have a full-time job and I have to juggle many things um, Great. So. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you, Susan. Bye. All right, viewers, here's the book. We're going to have links down below in the show notes for today so you can get your copy on Amazon. And we'll also have Pratima's link so you can find her. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.